Now let's do the jacket. To save some time, I made a screen capture of a jacket pattern that worked pretty well before. So I'm just going to trace that and then put all the pieces together. So first off, I'm going to make a big square, add a fabric, and then load in my texture. And then apply that to this big rectangular I have here. Now it's a bit hard to tell how big we have to scale it, unless we have something to go by. So I'm going to come up close, and I can see here it should be 115, so I'm going to click with my rectangular pattern tool and make the width 115. And the height, let's make it 40. So this is 115, so we need to scale this up quite a bit. Something like that. Maybe a tiny bit more. Alright, and then let's start tracing it out. So I'm going to take a rectangular pattern tool and make a shape. Add a segment point and then curve it. Now this blue thing here, that's a dart, so let's take our dart tool and make a dart that's around that shape. It doesn't have to be very wide, it can be narrow, just as long as there's a dart, so that you see it then when it's sewn together, that nice line there, that's often in the tuxedos. Segment sew it together, and then add all the internal lines. And if you're confused if you've already traced something out, you can always hide the texture to see what you've got there. And what this thing here is, it's actually two rectangulars, internal shape rectangulars. Copy that and then paste it down. And the one that I pasted down, I'm going to make a bit wider. And this will be the breast pocket, so this wider one is going to be the black piece that goes over the, the jacket, and then this will be for sewing on that white piece that goes into the pocket. And basically, this thing here is going to be the, the pocket flap. Depends what kind of style tuxedo you're doing. Some have pocket flaps, some have these two little black kind of slit things. I'll show you how to make both. This I want to be the height of 4, so it's actually better just to make a new one than to trace that one out. And then this thing I'm going to copy as an internal shape, and then rotate that. And we'll deal with that later. Alright, so there's two button, button shapes things here, so let's make those as well. And then trace the rest of the pieces. And this is going to be the breast pocket, but instead of tracing it, I'm just going to select the shape here, copy as pattern, paste it, and then do the same thing with this one. Now the reason that this is curved in a bit was to take in some extra material, curving it in just ever so slightly already makes it a bit tighter in him and got rid of some soft extra material. Also you can see that this back pattern is shorter than the front. And in fact let's make it the same length and then I'll show you why I made it short. Like that. Now how I got the exact shape of this collar, let's hide everything. I took this, copied it, and then pasted an extra copy. And then I transformed it. So it's lying against the other one, like when it's sewn together. And then we can see that this shape here, 
To make the color fit perfectly, we have to make it almost exactly the shape. Not exactly, because I did curve this out a bit, because there was like a, sh a sharp meeting point, it was sort of squarish, so I gave it a bit of a curve. And then basically what I did was I took my polygon pattern tool and traced out something like this to start with and then did an unfold on it and then played with it a bit more to get it to the shape I wanted. Also depends how the points are before you unfold them. If one is in more, it's going to unfold differently. So just play with it and once you sew everything together, you can play with it more, adjusting it to make it fit perfectly. I'm just going to trace it out, save some time. And then unfold it. And you can see it sort of looks weird. So let's just adjust that point before we unfold it. Still doesn't look so nice. Let's try it again. And there we go. Alright, then I'll copy this and symmetric paste it. And do the same thing with this one, copy and symmetric paste it. And with that label as well. And there it is high up in the sky, so let's bring it down. And take these back pieces to the back. Go to thin textured surface so we can better see what's what. Flip horizontally. And I'll deal with the pocket last of all, so I just deactivate that in the meantime. Now I'm going to assign the jacket fabric to the jacket. And the jacket collar fabric to the jacket collar. And the jacket label to the jacket label and assign the jacket breast pocket white part to that smaller pattern piece up there. Now let's sew it together. So I'm going to segment sew this to here and then edit the sewing, extend it down, or we could free sew it. And then this I'm going to sew to here and this to here. So basically this internal shape is with the shape of this. And this one I want to sew, so that you can see the difference. And then this will go to here, and this to here. And this part will go together. And then this button, free sew, double click to this one. And then as usual with the symmetric patterns, if the notches are facing the wrong way, so edit sewing, reverse sewing. And then the collar I'll do afterwards, so I'm going to Deactivate that for now. Simulate. And let's freeze the pants, we don't need them active. And these I forgot to sew. So this white one is going to go around to this inner shape, and then this outer one, which is going to be black, is going to go to this outer shape. You could just stick the jacket fabric on it for the meantime. And then simulate. So we're going to turn off fold rendering on these lines. And then hopefully we don't see it too much on the other side. We see it a bit, for some reason it's still showing there. So once you're done with everything, with changing the width, moving these points in and out to make it tighter on his hips or wider, etc, etc, then you'd want to remove symmetry in these two so that you can delete these shapes here so you don't see those lines there. Now for the jacket label, I'm going to make it a darker black and give it some specularity. Then we can see it a bit better and it also looks nice. So this side here, you can see, is very flat. Whereas this side, which wasn't sewn down, can be floppy and... It's not too floppy, but sometimes if he moves or if the clothes move a bit, it's not that straight like this side, so if you want to make sure it's nice and flat and straight, best thing is to place it on top of your pattern and then make an internal line, either fitting perfectly along to, to it, or slightly 
a bit offset to the right. If you offset it a tiny bit, make it a, a touch wider, so you can see here it's a bit more to the right. That's going to pull it tight and make sure that's really nice and tight. And also if you make it a tiny touch taller, that's also going to help pull it tighter. And one common thing when you overlay this on top of there, and then you try to trace really, really close to it. It ends up joining that onto the lapel instead of onto the jacket. So to avoid that, place it where you want to trace it. And then go layer order, I mean order, center back. And then you can trace right over it. And it's not going to attach itself to the lapel. It's going to attach itself to the jacket. Depending on, on your design of your clothes, if you make it too tight, it might burst open and end up looking like this, really ugly. But also sometimes, if it fits really nice in him, it sometimes tends to open up a bit anyway. So to limit that on your jacket fabric, you can raise the friction so it doesn't slip off him, and then you can pull it, and then it's much straighter. And then it's much slower to slip off, and if you raise the friction even more, then it will hardly slip to the side at all. Alright, now for the color here, let's activate it. And sew it. So I'm going to start segment sewing from here to here, here to here, this to here, and this to here. And one of the stitches got messed up. Let's see which one is that. There we go, now they should be alright. Now the reason that it has this shape here that's going out like that is so that when it goes underneath this part it looks like it's actually continuing all the way to here. But if I made it, but when I made it continue actually all the way to here it only caused trouble and this thing would keep lumping up and wanting to stand up etc. So I just cut it short here and then I'm going to cheat and sew this onto here and extend this seam here up to here and let's also put a speckler on, on the collar and then take this out on top of it and then you can see that it looks like it's actually going underneath it so let's do the same thing here and extend that sewing up to where the bottom is sewn. And there we go. Now in some places it's trying to go underneath the jacket layer, so let's just pick it up a bit more and that should sort it out. Now another thing I did here in the original jacket to make sure that this part didn't fold over like sometimes it wanted to do to start going like that. So I made this little line here and then all I did was I sewed from here down to here and if we lift that line up a bit higher make it a bit shorter then that holds it nicely in place. Now I don't think it's necessary right now so we can deactivate it and if we need we can have it active. Then what this line here is for, I sewed this onto there to keep it from lifting up. Right now it's behaving nicely so we don't really need to do that, but if you do, then you can sew it down. And then here in the back, oh yeah, in the pattern I had before we saw there was a line, I didn't trace that. But if we want to trace a line out now, you can just click here and make a, a line. that follows the shape of the collar and importantly too let's go to show our internal lines that it meets up with the other line and then I sewed let's see where this side would go to here so then I sewed this to here and this to here 
and this to here. And then that kept the color nice and flat without lifting up and without any lumps anywhere. And I think that looks good. Now, of course, if you wanted this part to stick out more, you'd grab this point here and this point here and stretch them. If you wanted this point, this corner point here to be higher, then you'd take this point and this point and lift it up and then it would be higher. If you wanted it to stick out more, stick in more, then you can just manipulate it. And if you want it to be tighter against his body, if he has more of a body that goes inwards here, then you just take this point in tighter and just play with it. You take it out more, make it straighter. It's going to be looser. There'll be more material there. And if you take it in more, it's going to be more snug. Now in the back here, we can see there's a lot of these ugly wrinkles. And if you recall from the shirts tutorials, sometimes we had that too. And the way that we solved that was by making the back a bit shorter. If you make it too much shorter, you'll get gathers at the seam, but if you just make it a bit shorter, you'll get a smooth back. Even a bit shorter. And there we don't have those big, ugly wrinkles. Now this strange thing here on the side is because this internal shape has fold rendering on, so let's turn that off. And that solves that. As for the pockets, there's mainly, mainly two kinds I've seen. One is these two patterned pieces, which are sewn very close together and have almost like a slit through the center. And here it almost looks like it's one black strip, but if you come up really close, you can see it's the same thing like the gray one, just in black, these two pieces there, which is fairly easy to do. And then there's the other kind, which is a flap pocket, and it also looks like it has one of those black strips on top. So I'll start by making this and then take away one of those strips and make a flap pocket instead. So here we've got the pattern pieces already for the flap pocket. Let's lower the particle distance so it's not breaking up at the edges. And for those two, I'll call it slit pocket. So let's move this aside for the meantime. And then copy this one and paste it down. And then copy this and paste it down. And you could instead make one that's the height of eight and make two internal lines in the center or one and sew it down like that or you could just sew it down like this. And then all we have to do is take our free sew tool, double click, double click. Make sure the notches are in the right, right direction. And then select these, activate them and superimpose over. make them black in fact I'm going to open up a fabric which I saved out which already has a nice texture and a cotton cloth preset and then I'm going to select these and drop it onto them show my textures take my edit texture tool and position this texture Something like that. Simulate. And more or less, there we have those two strips. I don't really like that so much, the style of that. So I'm going to get rid of this one. And I'm going to sew the flap pocket on instead. So I'll take my segment sew tool. Sew it onto here. Activate it. Superimpose over and then put the jacket fabric onto it. Hard to see because it's the same color, so I'm going to make a piping around it. I'm going to make it rather thin and put the jacket fabric onto it. Or you could put something different, something softer. But I think it's nice to have that stiff around. Stiff. Piping around it also makes it a bit stiffer and less floppy. And I think I'll make it even a bit thinner, I'll make it one. Something like that, that's not too visible, but just gives it that nice rim. 
Then I'll copy it and paste it. We could mirror paste it. Control R instead of Control V. And then it comes out the right angle and direction. And then free sew, double click, double click, and segment sew. And I'll pipe this pocket as well. Alright, now for the button. I'm going to select that internal shape, copy as pattern, paste it, particle distance 5, buttons, free sew it onto the jacket. And then I'm going to give it some thickness, thickness of 2, and there we've got a button. Now there should be a button down here too, so I'm going to copy and paste it and then free sew it on. And then we should probably add a buttonhole here. So I'm going to go up to here, then I'll load in a texture of a buttonhole I made. I just took it off an image, erased the parts around it, and made it a paint with a transparent background. And it comes in way too big, so let's just scale it down. Something like that. And I'm going to change the color to be a darker kind of color so it blends in nicer. And then we need to make an opening there where there's supposed to be an opening. So I'll take my internal rectangular tool and make a shape something like that. Add a segment point here and here, and delete that point, and then curve it. Select it and convert to hole. And there we've got a buttonhole. And of course for the pockets, if you didn't want to make a strip, you could make a thicker piping there instead. Just that the piping will be round, and, worst of all, right now, maybe in the future version it'll be different, the piping edges are always open, so then it looks like a weird pipe that has an open round chopped edge. So in some cases it's not so nice to use piping. Now about the bottom here, if you wanted it to be much more open, that's pretty easy too, just play with it move these parts in and looks distorted now, so just change the curve and then it's more open and you can of course move this point down and then curve it more to fit and play with it until you get the kind of shape that you like. Alright, so let's add the sleeves. The length of this and that is 435-ish, so let's make it 400 the width and the height 500. And while we work on the sleeves, I'm going to Freeze the rest of the tuxedo. And there's my sleeve. I'll put the jacket sleeves fabric on it, bring up his arrangement points. Then I'm going to split it through the center and lift that point up, holding down shift. Might be a bit too high, let's see. But it might be just fine. Then right click, convert to a curve point, and add two more curve points on either side, trying to keep them at the same height. And then here, for it to fit perfectly without causing lumps, let's just activate it, the side at least. I'm going to curve this down a bit, and then I'm going to free sew from here to here and from here to here. Segment sew together and take the bottom in a bit. I don't need it to be too loose but I don't want it to be too tight either so let's move it in by 
something like 30. And I want to see a bit of that cuff from underneath, so I'm going to take it up this line by, let's see, 10. Something like that. And there's a nice chart that you can look at, which shows you what's good, what's, what's bad. This is too long, this is too short, and this is just right. So I think it's just right. So when you've got it to the right height and length that you want it to be, select it, copy, symmetric, paste it. Find the center and then free sew to the front and to the back. Now let's make that part in the back with the four buttons. Usually it's four buttons, sometimes it's two with buttonholes. And what it is, it's basically a slit in the fabric, and then a bit of extra fabric that goes underneath it, and then the buttons on top. So let's do that. I'm going to click here, then I'll go where that point is, around there, take my split line tool, click once, and then another time, and then a third time. And I want to go up to about here. So I'm going to take that middle point and lift it up holding down shift. Even a bit higher. And I think I should move it a tiny bit more to the left so we can just select those lines, hold down shift and notch it over. I'm going to have the buttons here. This part will overlap over that. So to make that part that goes underneath it going to look at my line length, which is 111. So I'll click once, make the width 40, and the height 111. And then I'm going to segment sew this to there, and put the jacket fabric on it. And then I'm going to take my internal line tool, hold down shift, and make a line, and I want it to be 40 exactly like this So I have to take it out by 4.5. I'll start moving it hold down shift then right click and type in 4.05 Now it's a perfect 40 Segment so that onto there And let's try the superimpose under It's put it the wrong way, so I'm going to hide the sleeve and just reset that arrangement. And get it underneath, something like that. Then simulate. And there we've got that flap. Make sure it's straight. And then let's make the buttons. So there's going to be a small space here, and then four of them. So I'll take my internal circle tool, make something around like that, copy, and let's turn on snap to grid, and I'll also decrease the size of my grid. Copy, hold down shift, paste, paste, and I'll paste the third one over here, the fourth one. And move them a bit closer. Alright, something like that. And then I will copy them. And since this piece goes underneath, paste it at the same height. And then free sew. And I think we can move them a tiny bit more to the right.
something like that. Then I'll select this copy and Control R to reverse paste it. Sew these buttons together. And then segment sew this onto here and this onto here. And then I'm going to select those button shapes, copy as pattern, reduce the particle distance, give it some thickness, and apply the button preset onto them, and then free sew them onto the jacket. Copy them, and paste them here too. Because I didn't reverse paste them, all my seams are reversed, so I'm going to select them with my edit sewing tool and reverse them to bring them the right way around. Then I'll select my buttons and yes, they have the fabric applied, perfect. Right click on the gizmo and superimpose over. Same thing with these buttons. I think we should make them a tiny bit bigger. And also move it a bit more to the right. So to move it is very simple, we just have to select this whole thing here. And then holding down shift, nudge it over a bit. And then to change the button size, scale up the shape, show my line lengths. And then instead of scaling all the rest, we just delete them. And copy and paste this one down. And then holding down shift, we can slide it across nicely. And then sew together. And I think that looks better. So that's how to make a tuxedo. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a peaked collar, as well as a shawl collar. So what we have here is a notched collar. Now let's create a peaked collar. Like you can see here, it's called peaked because it's sort of pointing upwards. Basically, I'm just going to add a point onto my collar and take that point downwards. And then we can see the collar here, the other part ending too soon. So we need to extend that. Select these lines and then make it longer. I want the peaked collar to stick out beyond it a bit, so I'm going to move this and this together out to touch and I'm going to turn off snap to grid and I'm also going to extend this to here show line lengths this side has to get longer too I forgot about that before something like that simulate Make sure that this goes on top. And this is not going to fit very well like that, so I'm going to get rid of this point and this point. And that should make it fit a bit better, but still the angle is not quite right, so I'm going to take this point and this point and bring it down. And now it's also more like the length, like that one. I'm also going to bring it out to touch. Five. And here too. And 
and it needs to go down a bit further because we can see where it's ending. So I'm going to take this and this and these. And the reason that it's lumping like this, if we check the seams, is that I didn't extend this one down all the way, so let's do that. And then segments of this to here, and this to here. And then it sits nicely. And if it still has some lumps, then let's just move this to the right a bit. And that makes it tighter and then it becomes much flatter and smoother and nicer. So there we've got a peaked collar and next I'll show you how to make a shawl collar. So now let's create a shawl collar and this is what the thing looks like. It's sort of rounded and goes all around as one piece. So basically to make that I'm going to delete the collar here and delete this line and this line we don't need. Bring this up to the top and then extend this line up as well. And I want it to be a bit rounded, so I'm going to round up that internal line and then round the collar a bit. And then I'm going to add a point here and a point here and then take the top line and drag it up and move these points up as well. And add a point there to make it fit. And make it something like this. I'm gonna make this a bit less drastic. And then extend the sewing up. And take it down up to this point. Then segment sew these parts in the back together. And I'm just going to select everything else. And freeze it. And then simulate. I'm going to segment so this onto here and this onto here. Oops, seems like my sewing went wrong. And it's probably a bit too long, so I'm going to take this down a bit. I'm going to set this to layer 1, and this one too, and then I'm going to make this a bit less dramatic, this curve here, and then segment so this part onto here, and this part onto there. Reverse the seams, and then simulate bit too tall, so I'm going to take this point here, take it down, now we can see the fabric is being pulled in here and gathering, that's because there's a difference in the line lengths here, so I'm not going to make it exactly the same, but I'm going to raise this point a bit, and that should help relax it, there we go, and there we've got a shawl collar. And if you want to make it more rounded, then just go in there and make it more rounded. And that's basically it. I hope this tutorial's helped you, and see you in the next ones.